founder and CEO of Art House Healing and Art Chit Chat and Chip. Okay, listen here, listen here, listen here. I have some important information I'd like to share with you. And actually, for those of you who are artists, who collect art or collectors, students, art enthusiasts, or people that are planning for you know an estate. Well, you know, estate plan, I guess that's what it's called. Well, anyway, if something should happen to you, baby, and uh, there's no documentation. So, this piece that I'm going to share with you is information that I've learned that I'm sharing with you. And basically, it began with my art collection. And I did a video on art documentation. So this video is going to just focus on a small piece of documentation, but the main purpose of this video is to understand you, to help you to understand the process that I went through as far as a state plan. And baby, guess where it came from? Listen here, listen here, listen here. For all of you stuff, for all of you that are watching, you remember when that uh, building crashed? Not the building, the condo crashed in uh, Miami. I mean, in Florida. Right? I don't know which part it was, but in Florida. Baby, let me tell you something. That was in the eye opener for me, my own self. Now, I know I preach and break out in the sermon about documentation, documentation, documentation. I was in the process of creating my own estate planning myself. So, with that being said, let me tell you this. Baby, when that building crash collapsed, I was like, oh, shit. You can be here today, gone tomorrow. So, that led me to believe, you let me to, you know, focus on, oh my God, art collection severely and completely documented. So, just brief, but not going into the documentation process. I'm going to focus on the estate planning piece that I was like in awe. My own self. So, for documentation of your art, all you need is a couple items to begin with. Maybe something to write with, or you can use, um, like these people that are familiar with uh, Excel and Microsoft, you can use one of those to put your information in. Of course, you may need a pencil or a pen. Then, also, you're gonna need a measuring tape. And you're gonna need some type of device where you can photograph your artwork. You know, most people have cameras, so you wanna photograph. So that's basically how to begin the process. And I tell people, look, listen here. When you're at home, like I am at home now, nothing's on the wall because I am painting. I'm painting them all. For those of you who know me, the office so the uh, wall is taken down because I'll be painting, baby. I can't wait to show you the half of that. Huh. So, again. To begin the documentation process, something to write with, something to write on, something to take a pic, uh, a picture with, uh, something to measure. Now, you may want to document on some type of paper, or you may want to use Excel for those of you familiar with it, or at Sets being provided by Microsoft. But anyway, let me tell you something. In the part of my estate planning, I, baby, let me tell you, I was in awe because the process that you had to go through before you meet with the estate attorney. At least this is the process I had to go through. For those of you in Baltimore, I went to the Maryland Bar Association website, which is the 
lawyer referral service. Hey, you can have a tip side. But more than the referral service through them, you pay, I think it was, you pay them, I believe it was $23, $24. And they will submit to you uh, lawyers, private attorneys that you can um, go see. And baby, that consultation is only 50 bucks. Yes, I've used that. And I used them to get to where I am today to share with you this information. So I'm going through that process. With the Maryland, this is in Maryland. I don't know where, whatever it is, whatever state you live in, at the Maryland Bar Association, Maryland Lawyer, Maryland Bar Association. I went there, went to Lawyer Referral Service, which led me to calling them or submitting my information online. And I called also. And my reason for my referral service, because they have a list of things you choose from, was a state plan. And then this was based on what went on in Florida with the condo crashing. Who was it crashing? So, with that being said, the process began with contact the lawyer. We discussed it over the phone. And moving on with the process. You, know, you pay your consultation fee, I believe it's 30 minutes to an hour for 50 bucks. And it was worth it. So I paid my 50, my, uh, 50 bucks. Going in the beginning of the process, phone call, the lawyer and I had a conversation. I agreed, you get major discount. Then she sent me the client intake worksheet. Baby, here it is right here. The intake worksheet. This, this was 14 pages. You know what I'm telling you? 14 pages. So, for those of you who are listening or watching, on the front is the client intake form. Then is the next uh, sheet of paper. Now, this is with this attorney. I don't know. No other attorney, I don't know what other attorneys do. But this particular attorney that I am using, well, you know, I'll mention her name, Winkler. She's not paying me anything, but this is the attorney that I found, Muriel Winkler, right? So, first of all, it's like, you know, your personal information that you fill out. And then, the second one, I have to put my glasses on you all because Make sure I can see what I'm sharing. Let's go. The next form I had to fill out, remember there's 14, number one, number two. You advisors, like it actually about your account. Now, I text, I made a note, I took a note, like for the pages, if I had a question. Because one, is the accountant the person who does your taxes, or you just have to have, or do you have to have like a CPA? Financial advisor didn't have. Then, it has down here your concerns on here. And so I'm thinking that this concerns regarding your estate planning. For example, it says um, a couple of them. I'll just read a couple of them. I'm going to read them all. Providing for and protecting a spouse. None of them apply to me. Uh, protecting assets from lawsuits or creditors. And you know I'm highly concerned about that. Or uh, the other one is. Uh, Provide that your death shall not be unnecessarily prolonged by artificial means or measures. That's interesting. And they may have a code. H is high concern. Uh, S is some concern. L is low. NA doesn't apply. So a lot of mines were NA. And then, maybe I had some H's on here. Believe me. So then there's a next form, and I'm pressing right quickly. Important family questions. Like, for example, are you or your spouse receiving social security, disability, or other government benefits? Another question, let's say, do any of your children have special educational, educational, medical, or physical needs? That's something that did not apply. So most of my answers were no for that. That's this number three. It 
it's an important family question. That's what it's titled. The number four is property information. So the property information is basically, I'm not going into detail, but it says the general he uh, heading is this property information helps you list all the property you own and what it's worth in general. And then it has the types. Immediately after the heading for each kind of property is a brief explanation of what property you should list under that heading. I thought that was interesting too. And the owner of the property. And they have the code. If married, client name alone. And then it has with no other person. So, owner of property. If married, client name only. With no other person. So, my minus was C for minus. Hmm. And if you cannot determine how the property is sold, you put a code for a question mark. I'm like, oh, that's the four. And then, this is the part I thought I just say. Real property. I told you it was 14 days. This is what I had to complete. Send it to the state attorney. The first one is real property. It says type any interest in real estate, including your family residence, vacation homes, time shed, vacant land. Huh. So, I mean, for me, homeowner. Then, next part furniture and personal effects. Maybe. What it says is the types. You have jewelry, collections, bing, 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 and boom. Wait a minute, let me get my bed. Collections, antiques, furs, all other valuable non business. This is personal property. So, of course, this is where I come in that I wanted to share with you. Our collection, go on to your brass well. Appraisal year 2015 $151,750. Appraisal year 2018 $41,750. Appraisal year 2018 See, because I own the one thousand of $153,115 uh, in appraisal 2018. $168,100. Oh no, I'm sorry. $16,860. And the final total, which blew me away, was $363,478. That is just the art collection. And a part of what I showed you earlier with documenting your art, ensuring your art, submitting your artwork for appraisal to an appraiser to be certified for the ML for your insurance company. That's the process I've gone through for my collection at the present. And then you have to put your car. On here and the value of the car. I had to blue, blue, blue book that. Find out. Then ask you about your personal, your personal business, checking accounts. I had to do all of that. Plus the business account and nonprofit. Then, next sheet, I'm only on sheet six. Six. This asks about stocks and bonds, which didn't apply for me to me. Life insurance policies and annuities, which didn't apply to me. Retirement plans. Oh yes. Being in the health profession for all those years I've been in there, baby. I signed up for retirement plans. Believe me, and it was about that thing ever since I've had retirement in the mm -hmm. Oh yes, it did. Well, then the plans. I'm on page number seven. I'm not reading all these. I'm just giving you something of what I would with this estate plan. Then it asks for business interest. So I had two. 
or chit chat and chew and they ask you to describe basically what your mission is your purpose is. So our chit chat and chew is basically our management. How to document, how to prepare for insurance, how to prepare for estate planning, how to curate an Excel or access access database under Microsoft. And on Health and Healing, which is a nonprofit that deals with medical conditions, medical conditions, chronic medical conditions, right? Okay. Now, anticipated parents, gifts, or lawsuits. Planning in that apply to him other one is uh, other assets. I wasn't sure. But remember I told you those codes. I put the C because I control it. And I wasn't sure about the A and B figure because I have a bunch of little one on a buck. Probably like, I don't know, 10 and 15. And I sold that to play. Uh, chitlins, jump in the burn, the babysitter. That was the only thing I could think of like all the And then you have to put the value of those on here. And then those are not afraid. So I have to estimate those. But you know when those insurance companies say you got to be good. Then we go to sheet number eight, where there's a summary list of like the real property, furniture, and personal effects, like the savings accounts, stocks and bonds. Basically, it was a, it's a summary of all those things I mentioned before. And then you have to put your total down here. Total on this sheet. I'm telling you, honey, 14 pages. Guardian for minor children. That does not apply to men, no children. And then, which I all thought was interesting, it has on here disability interest. If you were unable to make decisions for yourself, who would you want to make decisions for you with regards to your property and asset? Oh, the other thing, death, death, trustee. After your death, who do you want carrying out your instruction for distribution to, to, um, to, and, oh, okay, wait a minute. After your uh, death, who do you want carrying out your instructions for distribution to and if desired management of your property for your beneficiaries? I was like, oh, spouse, that doesn't apply for me. And then I will sit there and And then you have to put the relationship. <laughs> Number 10. Maybe I'll tell you what's 14, so I'm going to four more pages to go. This is for power of attorney. And if you were unable to make financial decisions for yourself, I think most people are familiar with that one. I don't know. But anyway, uh, let's see. And they asked about a spouse, which doesn't apply to me. And uh, let's see. Do you want to authorize your financial aid to make gifts on your behalf? For any period of time, you are the best day. Who would I want to give anything to? I'm wondering. Hmm. As a gift. Some people I don't want to give as a gift now. Nah. <laughs> uh, and then it has a living will, please. If you want to provide it, if you want to provide that, the moment you're dead. Your death will not be unnecessarily prolonged by artificial means or measure. Do you want to provide that the moment of your death not to be not be unnecessarily prolonged by artificial means or measure? Truly, the man. I don't want to be a ventilator, artificial this and artificial that. No. Uh uh. Definitely do not want to go to a long-term care facility. I tell people, my family know, they push me inside my head. My home. But I earned my money for them. I earned my I worked hard for, for what I had, but you see, you know what I mean? They still walk in the wall. The press comes all down here. Because the guys were that baby. Don't be embarrassed. No, 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 no. I tell people, you gotta push me across this threshold. Let me die right on you on the floor. 
I'm going to drive me in the back y'all between the two roads. Let's see what else I have. Uh, do you want to authorize your Medicaid, medical aid to take whatever steps that are necessary to keep you in your personal reference rather than a nursing home? Definitely no nursing home. For me. Somebody's coming to this place to wash this special. Let's give it. Come on through. So I can finish this education piece. Hey, come on through. That's so pretty. Yeah, it's back. And then, 11 is uh, distribution of personal property and specific gifts. Uh, use of personal property, use of personal property, never land. Do you want to provide that your personal property will be distributed, distributed pursuant to a written list to prepare later? Yes, but I have done on this too. So that's good time. Uh, 12, only have two more to go, y'all. Yeah, two more. This one is providing for the survival spouse. But well, that doesn't apply to me. I have to be in the right there. And then this one is limited power of appointment. Do you want the surviving spouse? That doesn't apply to me, so I put an in for that. And number 14. Baby, like I said, for those of you who have children, spouses, these 14 pages is going to take some time and some thought to it. Really? So, page 14 says remote. Contingent be beneficiary. Uh, I made a note to ask the attorney. I emailed this. I scanned this document and emailed her. And she's going to reach out to me tomorrow. But this one says remote contingent beneficiary. Did anybody join? They probably left. Who do you want to receive your property in the remote event that no one listed above is alive? to receive your property. I never even thought about that. Mm. Determining the remote contingent beneficiary is not so important that it should cause you to delay completion of your entire estate plan. It can always be changed at a later date. I was like, oh! So, for me, what I did was outside of the beneficiaries or, or the people were designated in like 13 pages before this, I list, say for instance, like three other people within my family. And then it says other items to include or discuss. Obviously your state plan should address all your hopes, fears, and wishes. Please list any other items you want included or want to discuss. Now, this is for me. Some people probably have an attachment to this. Like, for me, it would be like my nonprofit, my for profit. I have an account set up for my um, nephew. That was custodian. I'm going to tell you the story of baby. He was about eight years old. And so, the good uncles needed money to be. So I was just joking one day, baby. I was saying kids are psychic. Guess what I did? I saw my how psychic they are. I asked my good nephew, he was about eight years old at the time. I was like, you should call him Joe Rose Scola. I was like, Joe Rose, give your good uncle a lot of me. I'm like, don't play. Because your good uncle need money to pay his taxes. My niece and nephew is the older one. They consider me the fun uncle. I'm sure you know why. So, baby, you got nothing but came out, didn't it? So, at the time, my sister was 18 and she had her. So I was like, I'm not giving her the money. But she was, baby, she was going to spend that money on her. Sale. So what I did was, we started to get financial advisor, Randy James' 
associate, Mr. Jane. They got put that money away for him when he was eight years old. Now he is told me it's about thirty two. There's a few few thousand dollars in there. He think it's millions. So I put some contingencies in there, honey. You had to graduate from high school. That was definitely one. And I'm not gonna share the whole story, baby. But he trying not to come for your good uncle, baby. For the good uncle. Baby, he must have think that I came over with uh, somebody that was used to go to in America. Because, baby, he was shocked. I'm not going to that whole story. So then, like, to see these plants behind me, I was like, what the hell am I going to do with these commercial side streets? Like, I'm full. I had four of them. Then, uh, I'm already familiar with my, with, uh, my, um, Retirement plan, baby. I was wondering, cause you know my brothers and sisters, they had wives and husbands. Now they know the good brother has a good income. And you know how people are. When they think money, they just money. These husbands and wives, they fall out with their good sibling. Their uh, my brothers and sisters or sisters. You know how people are. Well, you gonna get them. Oh, that brother like that my collection too. Yeah. Am I? Oh baby, I'm going to put a knife in his heart that's going to kill him and I I'm going to take that in my collection. So baby, one of my concerns on it is to prevent husband and wives and my sisters or brothers taking my collection. What can I put in here? Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. And then one of my uh, professional friends I may have to discuss that with you, Charlie. She wants to create a, my legacy, which she will buy the collection from one of the assigned people who are in control of the collection. She wants to buy it from them and create Paul W. Pratt's one gallery, one museum, to continue my legacy. And she collects art. I'm not mentioning her name, one of my professional friends. And she, she appeared to be very serious. So, for me, nothing is as serious unless the lesson writing is documented. And so I can leave with advice. That's something I'm concerned about. So, again, I'm going to tell my way up out of here, y'all. And if you like what I shared so far, please click like, follow, and baby! Share it all over the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Share it all over the world. And so then that being said, I'm going to bail my way right up out of here. I just want to be a ding 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 ding. And again, there will be another episode that goes into detail about how to document your art. <laughs>